All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this Sunday morning broadcast. It's Palm Sunday, the day that we normally celebrate the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem, his last trip before Calvary. And so we want to uh, begin this morning with a song again. I encourage you to sing along with us. The word should be on the screen. And uh, we'll sing this one, Hosanna, Hosanna. We we'll try to sing this one this morning as we uh, before we get into the word of God. All right, we'll sing Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Attraction 
for me, for the dear Lamb of God, He left His glory above to bury to die. Actually, the next one will be found in Matthew chapter 27. 
where Pilate asked the question there in Matthew 27 verse 17. But before I go into this, uh, I want us to look at the question in verse number 10. Um, it says, and when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, who is this? Who is this? Um, I want to use this, this, this question to, uh, to title my message this morning. Uh, from that question, my, the title this morning would be The Identity of Christ. The Identity of Christ. But let's look to the Lord in prayer this morning as we, we proceed, before we proceed further. Matthew chapter 21, verse 11, verse 10, sorry. Who is this? Let's pray and ask God's blessing upon the message today. Father in heaven, we thank you again for your word. Thank you to God for the opportunity to open the scriptures this Palm Sunday. Although we cannot physically gather today, we thank you that we can still have fellowship one with the other, wherever we are. We can have fellowship with you. And Lord, as we look into the word of God today, I pray that again we cleanse my mind and heart and, and fill me with the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, please remove every every hindrance, every, every, every doubt, every fear, and cause it, God, that your word will go forth with the anointing that only the Spirit of God can give. Please uh, please be with those out there listening. We pray for those uh, who may not be saved this morning. Again, we ask you to please come convict them of their sin and bring them to a saving knowledge of Christ. We pray for your saints, dear God. We pray that you bless the saints. We look forward to the day, God, when we can regather as your people. We miss the fellowship of the brethren. So I pray that God will work this out so we can all come back together sometime soon. We thank you again. We pray for hurting families now. Please comfort hearts and strengthen us in the midst of this tragedy and this crisis, we pray. Guide us now, we pray. Help us look at Christ. In Jesus' name we ask you. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, I read this verse here in verse 10 of chapter 21. It says, And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? As Jesus sat on that little donkey, and as he rode into Jerusalem, with crowds thronging around him, and him presenting himself to, to Israel for the last time, he, the question is asked, Who is this? Who is this? Um, you would have thought that people by now would have known exactly who Jesus Christ is. Nevertheless, the question comes up, who is this? But as I read this question and as I read the rest of the story of the crucifixion, the trial and crucifixion of Christ uh, in Matthew 27 and onwards, I, I, came to, I, I came to realize that the identity of Christ, the identity of Jesus Christ, uh, was a common theme throughout his ministry on earth, from his conception to his resurrection. The, the question seemed to be constantly asked, who is he? Who is this? Um, and so today I'd like to, I'd like to approach the subject of, the, of the, the, the entry of Christ into Jerusalem, as well as his crucifixion on, on Calvary, from, this, from the standpoint of this question, who is this? Who is Jesus Christ? There is, a lot of, there is a lot of talk about him. Uh, of course, there is much, much concern in the world today with the present crisis, with uh, the COVID uh, crisis we are dealing with. Many people are probably looking up to heaven and wondering, is Jesus listening? Is he, is he aware of all of this? What's the reason for all of this? And what I find as I read the scripture that the question of his identity comes up often. As a matter of fact, his identity, the question, who is this, was prominent throughout his ministry. Even at his birth, um, the angels came to the shepherds in the wilderness and said, uh, in, in the desert they had to watch the sheep. And the angels said, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And you find that, that the angels right there identified who he was. Jesus Christ, the Lord of heaven. He's, the, he's, he's called here, he's called Christ, the Lord. Then even at his baptism, we find when he came to John the Baptist to be baptized, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John 1, 29. You see again here, the, the question of his identity, or who is this, 
It keeps coming up in his ministry during his time here on the earth. His birth, the angel said, this is Christ the Lord. At his baptism, John the Baptist said, this is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And then even in Jesus' personal ministry of evangelism, as he was talking to a woman by the well in John chapter 4, Jesus was speaking to this woman and she didn't know who he was. But again, the question of his identity comes up. And Jesus said to her, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that said unto thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked ask him, and he would have given thee living water. Again, we find Jesus is re relating to this woman and saying to her that if you only knew who was talking to you, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. But praise God, a little further down in the text, we find out that she did find out who he was. She found out that he was the Christ. He was the promised Messiah. And she did ask him for that living water. And she did get saved. And she did have a faith placed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as a result, she went and told many others in that village who he was. This is the Christ. It is also in Peter's confession uh, when Jesus asked, Whom do men say that I am? Whom do men say that I am? And of course, the disciples answered, Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But, but Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Again, we notice the identity of Christ is always coming into play. It's always coming into focus. Who he is. And then even at his public presentation here, the people are asking in that city of Jerusalem, verse 10, Who is this? And then they answer. Notice verse 11 of Matthew chapter 21, verse 11. The Bible says, And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. So that was the concept of who he was. Yes, he was indeed the prophet of Nazareth. Yes, he was indeed the prophet of Galilee. Yes, he was indeed the son of God. Yes, he was indeed all that was said about him. But you notice as we come to his trial and crucifixion in Matthew chapter 27, and, and onwards. Notice the Bible tells me here in, in chapter 27, Jesus has been arrested as he came from the, from the Garden of Gethsemane and he's taken to the high priest's home. He's taken there before this Sanhedrin and he's going to be tried there, in, uh, there before the high priest and his, and his group. But notice the Bible tells me as he comes there, they take him and they bring him to Pilate. And as he stands before Pilate, there is again the question of his identity. Judas comes in and notice Judas confesses that he has betrayed the innocent blood in Matthew 27 and verse number 4. He says here, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. Who is this? Well, his identity was prominent in his public ministry. By his birth, his baptism, his evangelistic efforts, Peter's confession, and not his now, notice his public confession, his public presentation, so to speak. The high priest who condemned him, they condemned him claiming that he claimed to be the Son of God. Matthew 26 and verse 63 to verse 64. Judas comes in and he confessed that Jesus Christ is the innocent blood. His blood is innocent. He is a sinless one. Then he stands before Pilate. And notice as he stands before Pilate, the governor asked him in verse number 11, Matthew 27, and Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him saying, Are thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. Again, the question of his identity comes up. Jesus said, Yes, I am the king of the Jews. Then notice a little further down as, the, as, as Pilate is trying to get Jesus released because he realized that Jesus Christ is innocent. Jesus Christ was sinless. He comes there in verse 27 and he says, Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that are released unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? And of course, the crowd screamed for Barabbas. They wanted a murderer instead of Jesus. 
They wanted a thief. They wanted a, they wanted a criminal instead of Christ. And they said, we want Barabbas released, and we want Jesus crucified. And the Bible tells me in verse number 33, and verse number 33 of Matthew chapter 26, it says, and when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, or Calvary, or a place of a skull, as the Bible says, and when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him. And they crucified him. And parted his garments, cast in lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garment among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there. My friend, I want to let you know and remind you today that who Jesus Christ is was the issue all throughout his ministry. And now it becomes the issue that will cause him to be condemned to the cross. The Bible tells me that the high priest condemned him because they said he claimed to be the son of God. Judas confessed that Jesus Christ is the innocent blood. And so G Judas, even the enemy of Christ, identifies him as the innocent blood, the one who has sinless blood. Herod realized that Jesus Christ was sinless. Pilate realized that he was indeed an innocent man. The pilot, Pilate's wife also recognized that he was an innocent man. And she came to Pilate while he was there uh, at the hall of judgment. And she said, have nothing to do with this just man. For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. You see, the identity of Christ not only was prominent in his ministry, but his identity became the main issue at Calvary. The Bible tells me before they placed him on the cross, in verse number 27 of Matthew 27, he says, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, approximately 600 men. And they stripped him and put on him his scarlet robe. And when they had planted the crown of thorns, they put it upon his head. And they reeled in his right hand and they bowed their knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Now even the soldiers, as they mocked the Son of God, imagine they have taken the Son of God. Jesus, he's come from Pilate's hall of judgment. And Pilate scourges him, and, and Pilate delivers him to 600 soldiers. And they decide they will have a little fun. And they took him, the Bible says, and they stripped him of his robe, and they placed a mocked robe on him, and they placed a crown of thorns on his head. And as the crown of thorns, my friend, pressed into his precious brow, and the blood flowed from his head, the Bible says they stood and they mocked him. But notice what they said, Hail, King of the Jews. You see, who he is became the main issue at Calvary. Not only was it prominent in his public ministry, but it became the main issue at Calvary. And then the Bible says they took him and they stripped him and they beat him and they placed a reed in his hand pretending that he was there. They, they were mocking him because they said he was the king of the Jews. Indeed he is the king of the Jews. Indeed he is the son of God. Indeed he is the lamb of God. Indeed he is the innocent blood. Indeed he is the son of God, my friend. But notice how his identity becomes the main issue here at Calvary. But notice it says, after they had done that to him, they took him to a place called Golgotha, a place of a skull, whether it was shaped as a skull or as a, or as a place where many skulls were because of previous crucifixions, it's left to be debated. But nevertheless, he's taken to a place, a horrible place, my friend, a place of darkness, a place of, of death, a place where he is hung there 
between two thieves. The Bible tells me they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him. There he was, God in flesh, hanging upon the hill of Golgotha. There he was, crucified, because of who he claimed he was. But notice the Bible tells me, sitting down, they watched him there. And then look at verse number 37. It says, and they set up over his head his accusation, his accusation written. Here it is. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And if you read the rest of the, of the Gospels, you'll get the entire uh, inscription there. It would, it would read, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Notice how upon the cross, his identity, his identification became his condemnation. His identity, my friend, was nailed upon the cross. And there as Jesus hung, his identity became the main issue on Galilee. The title of the cross read, This is Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And even as he hung on Calvary, with his hands pierced and his feet pierced and his, his, there's a crown of thorns on his head. And there as the Son of God, God himself, hanging on that cross, he did not cease to be God, my friend. He did not cease to be the King of Israel. He did not cease to be the Son of God. He was always and always will be God. But there as he hung on Calvary, the question, who is this, becomes the excuse for this ignorance. This is Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. But even as he hung there, notice, the Bible tells me in verse 40, they walked around, people were moving around, and the Bible says in verse 40, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thy if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. There it is again. If thou be the Son of God, or since you are the Son of God, again his identity is mocked. Who is Jesus, friend? Who is this? The Bible declares from the friends and enemies of Jesus Christ who he is. The Bible reveals, my friend, all of the things that were given here. Jesus Christ is indeed the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee, as the crowd confessed. Jesus is indeed Christ, the Son of God, as the high priest confessed. Jesus is indeed the one with the innocent blood, as Judas confessed. Jesus is indeed the just one, as Pilate's wife confessed. Jesus is indeed the innocent one, as Pilate himself confessed. Jesus is indeed the king of the Jews, as the, as the scribes and Pharisees confessed. Jesus is called Christ, even as the Bible confesses. Jesus, my friend, is called the Lamb of God as John the Baptist confessed. You see, his identity was always prominent in his ministry, always prominent here on Calvary. But I want you to note that his identity would bring all men to a certain personal reality. And for this, I want to go back to Matthew chapter 27 and verse number 22. Pilate is looking at Jesus, and Pilate realizes that Jesus Christ is innocent, he's perfect. And Pilate asked the question that I, would ask, that I would ask now at the end of this message. The question is this, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? The identity of Christ brings us, my friend, all men, to this personal reality. What then shall you do with Jesus, which is called Christ? You see, Jesus is inescapable. And the fact that his identity was prominent in his ministry should confirm 
and should be clear in your mind and heart from his birth all through his ministry that he is indeed the Lamb of God, the Christ who came and died for the sins of the world. There as he hung on Calvary's heel, there as his hands and nails were pierced, as his hands and feet were pierced with the nails, there as a crumb of thorns brought blood from his brow, there as they plucked his beard from his face, there as Jesus Christ, God in flesh, hung on that cross, he's clearly identified as God's remedy for a sinful world. The reason why he had to come is because of God's love for mankind, man's sin against God. The reason why he came and the reason why he went through all of the sufferings and the darkness and the separation, all of this, my friend, was because Jesus loves you. And Jesus loves me. And Christ knows that apart from his sinless sacrifice, apart from Jesus dying upon that hill, apart from the Son of God giving his life instead of others, like they said, he saved others himself, he cannot save. Instead of man going to a crisis hell, Jesus Christ came and died in our place, my friend. And that's what Easter is all about. That's what, the, the, that's what Palm Sunday and Calvary and the celebration of, of, of the death and resurrection of Jesus, that's what it's all about. It's all because someone identified as Jesus Christ, the God of heaven, who became flesh. And it brings us to this personal reality. What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? You see, the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is, is meant to bring you to a personal decision. As a matter of fact, it brings all of us to a personal decision. Because Jesus Christ is inescapable. Either you reject him or you accept him. We are all born, going away from him, born rejecting him. As a matter of fact, the crucifixion proves how awful sin is. You think about that for a little bit, my friend. What we, are, what we have read here, when the Bible says they crucified him in verse 35, and parted his garments, cast in lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there. Sitting down, they watched him there. Imagine the callousness of sinners. They have crucified the very Lord of glory. They have crucified the creator of this universe. They have nailed him on a cross. That's what sin does, my friend. That's what my sin and your sin has done to the Son of God. And the Bible clearly identifies who he is to bring man to this decision. What then? Shall you do with Jesus, which is called Christ? Because there is no middle ground as far as the cross is concerned. The Bible says the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. The cross separates. Either you are for him because you have humbled yourself at the foot of that cross, and you have recognized that the one who died on that cross is who he said he is. The Lamb of God. The Son of God. The creator of the universe. Who gave his life. That man might be saved. So my question this morning is before I close. What is your decision with respect to this personal reality of who Jesus Christ is? What shall I do then with Jesus? You've got to do something with him. You cannot ignore him. He must be dealt with. And my Bible encourages us, teaches us here that the best response to the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is to number one, recognize that you are lost. Realize that you're going away from God. 
And as you sit there and look, even as the soldiers sat there and looked at him, imagine yourself sitting there with them, looking at Jesus Christ, whom you have crucified, whom I have crucified, whom the world has crucified. Look at him. But they were not looking at him by faith. They were looking at him in a callous, callous spirit. Not realizing that before them is the savior of the world. The only one who could save them from hell. You need to realize that you're a sinner and that Christ alone can save you. But I'm glad that the story ended with one of the soldiers at least realizing who Jesus Christ is. You know, the thief on the cross, one of them realized who Jesus was and said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He made his choice right there on that cross and he was saved. But I'm glad to announce that at the end of the crucifixion here, the Bible says in verse 45 of Matthew chapter 27, he says, now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. From 12 to 3 p.m., there was darkness. And he says about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then the Bible tells me here in verse number 51, in verse number 50 rather, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Wow. When Jesus died, the veil of the temple in Jerusalem was ripped from the top to the bottom, indicating that man now has access to God directly. He doesn't need a priest because now we have only Jesus, the perfect high priest. The graves were opened, the Bible says, and bodies of the saints rose and came out after the resurrection. But look at verse 54. Now when the centurion, that's a Roman soldier standing there watching him, when the centurion and they that were watching, they, they that were with him, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. Truly, this was the Son of God. My friend, that soldier came to the realization, this personal reality of who Jesus Christ really is. And the question is this. What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? Would you trust him today? Because one day you will see him again. He is alive. He is risen. We'll celebrate that next week, Lord. Within, of course, we celebrate really every Sunday. The fact that he is alive. But today, as we focus upon his identity, who is that man that hung on Calvary? He is the Son of God. As that centurion confessed. And the question is asked, what then shall you do with Jesus, which is called Christ? My prayer this morning, if you hear, listen to me, is that you would bow your head before him and confess that you are a sinner. Confess that you've done that which he is displeased with. You've sinned against a holy God. And God's justice demands judgment. Well, Jesus, the Son of God, took your judgment on Calvary. He took my judgment and the judgment of sin on the whole world. That you can repent. You can change your mind about your sin. You can change your mind about your direction. You can change your mind about God and realize that this Jesus, who is this? This is your Savior. This is the Son of God. And if you call upon him right now, just like that thief on the right hand side of Jesus said, Lord, remember me when thou come into thy kingdom. And Jesus said, this day shall thou be with me in paradise. You can be with Christ today. You can be saved if you simply humble yourself on the foot of the cross and ask him to forgive you. Would you do that this morning as I pray? Let's pray. Father in heaven, 
Thank you again for your word. Thank you for revealing to us who Jesus Christ is. And I pray for that soul of there that's probably bowing down in prayer. I ask you, dear God, to help them to come to that place of surrender. I ask you now, God, that you save sinners. Oh, Lord God, may your word bring conviction. My friend, if you are there today and you'd like to be saved, and you pray with me this morning, you make this your simple prayer to God. Mean it from your heart today. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I understand who Jesus Christ is. The Son of God, the Lamb of God. He died for my sins. I now repent of my sins and I place my faith in Jesus Christ and ask him to save me. Would you ask him to forgive you right now? Say, Lord, forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and sin. Make me your child and now receive you as my Lord and my Savior. In Christ's name I pray. My friend, if you pray, if you trust the Lord today, my friend, he loves you, he wants to help you. He's in your heart, you've trusted him. Would you please let us know, call, or send a message via Facebook, and we'll be glad to connect with you and help you, give us some, some materials that you can grow, help you to grow in Christ. We'd love to hear from you. May God bless you, see you this evening at 6 o'clock, as we again engage in the Word.